Welcome to challenge number seven. And as always, let's start by taking a look at the technical drawing. We've got another box and it looks like we've got another three major cuts in this box. There's a big chunk taken out of it here and at the bottom of a wedge cut taken in from the top over here. Next thing is ask yourself which side is the best side to start from. And for me, that side is the one that's the most complicated or that has the most degrees of freedom. And that would be the side at the back here. So let's head into Soul Space and let's get started. In Soul Space, I'm going to start sketching this with the Line Segments tool. So it's a bit weird looking from the back of the object. And now I can start constraining these lines. Now I can start constraining the lengths of these lines. And this is 12. And uh, I made the mistake in my sketch. I forgot to put in the cuts here. So I'll just delete this line and, and now I'll add in that cut. And there are shortcuts for these constraints, but I'm going to use the buttons in the constraint panel. And these two lines are the same length as are these two. This line has a length of 55 millimeters. And this line has a length of six millimeters. And I'll constrain these two lines to be of equal length. And we have four degrees of freedom left. And I need to say that these two lines have the same length. So this line has to be six millimeters. And we've got two degrees of freedom left. And that's because I can move the whole structure in the plane, select this point and that point, and to constrain point on points. We can now extrude this model with a depth of 100 millimeters. So let's start with a top cut. I'll select these two lines on that point and create a new work plane. Now I'll create a new rectangle. And as you know, I don't like to draw rectangles directly onto contour lines. It's just my uh, preferred workflow. I'll constrain the rectangle now by selecting these two points and selecting constraint points on points. And the same thing down here on this line, constraint points on line. And we've now got one degree of freedom left. And that's because I can uh, change the size of this rectangle. Let's now constrain this line to have a length of 63 millimeters. And we've got zero degrees of freedom. So now we can extrude the rectangle by taking the difference between it and the previous model. So I'll click difference and I can click and drag that if I like. I've constrained the cuts to be 24 millimeters. Let's take another look at the technical drawing. What I'm going to do is start on this wedged cut at the top. Create a new work plane. I'll select these two lines and points and click here select the sketch line segments tool that's because we're going to create a trapezoid shape the length of this line needs to be 25 millimeters the difference between these two lines here is 30 so i've made a mistake in the beginning of my workflow let me just check what it is so i've just gone back in the properties panel and i've clicked on this radio button if i click w that'll orient the camera so i can look at the work plane head on and this is another good example of how good soft space is in allowing you to go backwards make some corrections and then allow those corrections to automatically trickle down through your workflow tree in the properties panel the mistake i've done is to say that the distance here was 55 it should be 50 and now the distance between these two points should be 25 and go back to my current sketching plane and I'll click W on the keyboard and that will orientate the uh, work plane head on with the camera. And now you can see that uh, the, the distance between these two lines is in fact 25 millimeters. So I can now overlay these points directly above that. So select those two points and click constraint point on point. That fits nicely now. And this line needs to be 37 millimeters. It would help if I constrained these two lines to have the same length and this point and this line needs to be overlaid. 
but we've still got uh, one degree of freedom and that's because I need to constrain this point. So I'll click that point in that line. <clears throat> now that we've got zero degrees of freedom, we can extrude the model and take the difference between it and the previous one and the depth should be 12 millimeters. So now we can start on the elongated hole. So I'll select these two lines and that point and create a new work plane. So we need two arcs connected by two line segments. So I'll draw the first arc and then I'll select the line segments tool. Now we've got a closed contour there. I just need to check the structure first. That one needs to be horizontal. So that's one constraint I did. The diameters of these semicircles should be 16 millimeters and these two are equal. This line should be 20 millimeters. I found that the best way to constrain this shape be to have these points on the arc and the center of the corresponding circle to be vertical to each other. Click here on constraint to be vertical and the same thing with these two points and these also. Now let's constrain the position of this elongated hole. This needs to be 20 millimeters from this line and it needs to be at the center of this work plane. Let's select a point and I can put this point on the line, selecting the point and the line and then clicking M on the keyboard. And now horizontally align the center of one of the circles with that point and that should then correctly align that elongated hole. And now we can move on to extruding it. We've got zero degrees of freedom. I'm checking the properties panel here. I can click the extrude button, click difference, and it's gotten all the way through, but we want one of these points to be flushed with the surface. So I'll click one of the points with the surface and then click constraint point on plane. We've only got three more holes to do. Let's create a new work plane. So we'll select the circle tool and another circle here. And the diameter of one of these holes is six millimeters because it says we've got two holes. M6 refers to the diameter of the hole. We have a depth of 20 millimeters. So let's do that. I'll select one of the circles and I'll click uh, this button, constrain diameter, V6. And these two will have the same diameter. So I'll select them and click constrain the equal length. They need to be properly aligned to each other. So I'll select the centers and click V for vertical. Uh, they need to be 12 millimeters from the edge. So I'll select that point on the line, click constraint distance and type in 12. And we've got two degrees of freedom left. And that's because we need to um, state the distance between the center of the circle and the edge of the block, as well as the distance between the circles. So the distance between them is 44 millimeters. And lastly, the distance between the center of the circles and the outer edge is nine millimeters. With zero degrees of freedom, we can now extrude the model. And let's take the difference. And I want the depth of this extruded axis to be 20 millimeters. And finally, we need to create the last hole, which is in this plane here. So let's create a new work plane. But uh, you'll see that um, it's slanted the object and that's because it's trying to make this line vertical. What I'll do is I'll select this line and that line and this points to create a new work plane. I'll just select the work plane that I've just created and hit delete button in the properties panel up here. And I'll try that again. And that's a better view for me. Now I'll select circle. And the diameter of this is 10 millimeters. Its position is in the midpoint of this line. And we already have a midpoint here. So I can select the center of the circle and that point and make them vertical to each other. And its distance from that point has to be 20 millimeters. And now we've got zero degrees of freedom, which means I can now extrude it and take the difference and finally select that point and the face and make it flush to each other by clicking constraint point on plane. And take a final look at it and make sure I've got everything right. And yeah, I think that's it. So I'll go to home, hide all. And now you can see that shape better now. So that's uh, challenge seven done. Let's move on to challenge eight. Thank you.